first. That is waking us up to find the truth. Is telling us that the Torah is not far away from us. It's in our mouths and in our hearts to keep, to do, to do as much as we can. Now, many times when people want to connect themselves to heaven, to the truth, to the, to the Torah, to the real truth, the Met Lamita. Also, to those people, the Torah is saying, be aware to the fact that it's not far away from you. Even if you want to reach divine goals and such high, high aspects in Avodat Hashem, you try to read from the holy books, and that's an aspect of this, and an aspect of that. And the Torah is coming and grounding us, helping us to land and to remember. It's not far away from you. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep, to do. Just listen to the voice of Hashem. And Hashem is telling us again, and Moshe is saying that same thing again and again. Hashem told me to tell you, and those are the words of Hashem, and it must be so, so simple, or else we wouldn't be all commanded to keep Torah and Mitzvot. If it would be so complex, and so high, and so great, and so divine, and so sophisticated, and, and wise, so we wouldn't be commanded to keep it. We wouldn't have the ability because Hashem, He knows our inclinations, He knows our weaknesses, He knows our difficulties, He knows how weak we are as individuals and how weak is this generation. He knows all of those things, so He would never expect us to do something that is beyond our power. And especially when it's written that the Creator will never test a person in a test that he cannot stand in that text. But you find yourself in life dealing with situations that you say to yourself, I can't handle that. I'm not able to solve that problem. How can it be? What's going to be the solution? I'm drowning. I'm suffering. I can't find an answer. I can't find a solution. I don't know what to do. How can it be? The Torah is Torah of truth. It must be that you're just looking too far. That you're not searching in the right direction. It's not far from you. It's not across the sea. It's not behind the highest mountains. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep and to do. And if you'll do that, you'll find an inner spring of endless power that will connect you to infinity, to eternity, to places that belongs in the world to come, but it will be your share. Suddenly it will be a tool in your hand. For an example, Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is saying that Matea Elokim, the staff of God, the staff of Hashem, that was in the hand of Moshe, is the power of free choice. It's koach abchira. So now suddenly the staff of God is not something so far. It's just to control yourself. It's just to control your decisions and to make the right choice. Okay, so suddenly the staff of God is not something that you need to look for in the desert of Yehuda. Where is it hidden? In the caves of Shlomo Amelech, in the treasures that are hidden in the days of the first temple. No, 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 the staff of God, no, no, no. It's the power of the free choice. Now, what does it mean? Free choice must be something important, something great. Rabbi Nachman is saying it's something very simple. If you want to do it, you do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't do it. Okay, simple, that's it. What's the power of free choice? You can choose, you can hold the staff of God in your hand. What does it mean? To do the right thing. What do, does it mean to do the right thing? If you want to do good, you do good. If you did wrong, admit it. You didn't want it to do good. You wanted to fail. You had your weaknesses and you went with them. You went with your weaknesses. You chose wrong and it's okay. Also for that, there is a solution. Oh, what I'm going to do? How I'm going to fix? I messed up so much. I did horrible things. But there is only one simple, so tiny and simple solution 
for all of the sins, for all of the mistakes, for all of the, 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 the defects, for all of the failures. One thing, tshuva, an answer to all doubts, to all questions, to all fears, to all anxieties, to all doubts, to every possible failure that a person can fail. Tshuva mo'il lakol. Tshuva will help you for everything. Okay, what is tshuva? Oh, tshuva. You don't know what it means, Shuvah. No, I do. There is Rambam. You open the book, Rambam, and Rambam is explaining. You need to stand in front of the Creator. Where is the Creator? Melokolar, it's Kevado. He's all over the place. Everywhere you're going to look, you're going to find Him. Great, wonderful. Now, what you need to do when you're standing in front of Him? He doesn't need to be in the Holy Land. He doesn't need to be in the Holy City. He doesn't need to be in front of the, the Holy Temple. He doesn't need to be in the Mount of, 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 of Olives. He no, nothing. Simple. What, where, everywhere. In front of Hashem means just to stand and pray. How are you going to pray? In your own language. That's how you fulfill your obligation of praying. Just start from your heart. Great. What should you do? Express your regret. Say to Hashem, I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I messed up. I'm sorry, Hashem. That's confession. Finish with that. Now say to Hashem in Barach, can you please help me not to fail again? You completed your tshuva. Now, why are you not satisfied with that? Because you're too wise. Because you're too wise, you don't understand that it's not far from you. It's hard for you to believe that with such simple actions that you're going to make, you're going to achieve so much. But the Gemara is saying that if a person just regret, on one sin, regret on one sin, they're forgiving him on all of his sins. He regret on one. He haven't even completed his tshuva. He just regret. He felt bad with himself. The Gemara is saying, They're erasing from heaven all of his sins. Now, what's the problem to believe in that? Why is it too hard to believe that all of your sins just been erased if you regret? Because we don't understand the greatness of the Creator. We don't get how, how sweet and amazing and, and great He is. To give us that tool that really can help us to atone, to erase, to clean everything that we did. Now a person messed up, okay, you made a horrible mistake, you did something very, very wrong, great, wonderful. Now you want to fix it, okay, great. Now you do tshuva, you come, you apologize to the person you hurt him, you do your own tshuva, you regret, you apologize, you pray, please Hashem help me. But then you keep on judging yourself, keep on hating yourself, keep on blaming yourself, keep on... Having that grudge and, and, and hatred, self-blaming yourself so much and, and for no reason. And that's now become to be another sin. You're hating yourself and by that you're sinning. So what's the solution? Do tshuva. Hashem, I was doing something wrong. I hated myself. I blame myself, Hashem. I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> it's not. I'm so happy. In every class that I give, I have at least two people that never heard that song. It's so amazing. It's so inspiring that you still have people in this generation that haven't heard that song. <laughs> you need to understand that the redemption depends in the endless love of the Creator to His people. The word Israel, Israel, we're writing it Yud and Shin, Resh, Aleph, Lamed, Yisrael. Those are the first letters of another verse. And that verse is saying, Ve'el Shaddai iten lachem rachamim. God, the Creator, that one of His names is Shaddai, Shin Dalet Yud, iten lachem rachamim. Gonna give the mercy, the mercifulness, into your hands. He will let you have mercy on the world. He will put that tool in your hands that you will reveal His mercy in the world. That's the purpose of our nation, of the nation of Israel. That Kel Shaddai ten lanu rachamim, that He will give the mercy in our hands that we will reveal the loving kindness of the Creator down to the world. The meaning of the word mercy means kindness to people that are not deserved to receive that kindness. 
and endless amounts of mercy. That's the secret of redemption. That is the light that is about to reveal in this world and to bring us to heaven, to that level of the world to come, in what it depends, first of all, in our faith, that we will understand that that is the plan. Because as long as we're going negative and, 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 and narrow-minded and so sad and constricted and all of the time, no, look what I've done, what's going to happen to me, I'm not going to have a world to come, I'm not going to be rewarded, oh, now look, I've been punished. How do you know that you've been punished? Oh, I made a car accident. And how do you know that it's a punishment? How do you know? Oh, because I was just talking Lashonara. But do you know for sure that that is the connection? Do you see the link? Do you see the connection? Do you see it? You saw it with your eyes? Or that you just so used to blame yourself and punish yourself all of the time and hating yourself and thinking, oh, it's because of this. You just used to blame yourself on every default, default, on every mistake, on every failure in your life. But you don't know that really you are the reason for all of those difficulties. If it's dark now outside, is it because of our sins? Maybe it's because that it's night. Hashem just hide the sun right now. He's using the earth to hide the sun. And you cannot see because Hashem chose a certain way of illuminating the world. And now when the sun is in a certain place and the, the, the globe is in a different place. So that's it. It's night for you. So why to blame yourself on that? Oh, now you made a car accident. Who said that it's punishment? Some crazy rabbi that you heard in this class? It doesn't mean that it's the ultimate truth. Your crazy parents? It doesn't mean that they're always right. Your fears and your anxieties? It doesn't mean that they're always right. A person must ask Hashem. Even King David was asking Hashem it Barach all of the time. Hashem, what is the truth? I want to know your truth. Guide me in the path of your truth. Not in the path of my crooked truth. I don't know what the truth is. I know that if I'll ask you to answer me with truth, so you will answer the truth. You will tell me. But before you ask, before you open your mouth, before you pray, before you go and ask and talk with him, just like you talk to your best friend, like that Avraham Avinu, our first and amazing father, Avraham Avinu, was going every morning. That's how he was opening his day. He would go to a quiet place and just opening his mouth and talking with Hashem. He was just opening his mouth and sharing and asking, please Hashem, I don't know. I'm thinking, you know, I was wondering Hashem, I was trying and, and, and it didn't work. And please, can you tell me the truth? And the Midrashim are explaining that. You look at the ancient books. You can read all of the history of Avraham Avinu. The history of Yitzchak, of Yaakov. Regular, normal people with a holy desire for the truth. Not backing off from the truth. Ready to sacrifice themselves for the truth. Like King David, like Moshe Rabbeinu, like all of those huge righteous people. We're talking about honest, kind, sensitive people that threw themselves toward the truth, and that's it. And they never backed off. And even if they failed, Avraham Avinu failed, King David failed, Yaakov Avinu failed, Yitzhak Avinu failed, they all failed. Many times they failed. On Moshe Rabbeinu it's written that he failed five times in anger. He was upset, he was angry five times. Not in the right way. It was a failure, he'd been punished on that. Really, it's written that he'd been punished on that. Five times in his life, and he was a prophet. So also a prophet can make mistakes. Also King David is testifying on himself that he sinned. And he's doing tshuva in front of Hashem. He's saying, you're righteous Hashem, and I messed up, I sinned. I did something wrong. All of the righteous people that had a point of truth were able to admit in their failures, in their mistakes, and then there is only one thing to do. Tshuva, to come back to Hashem. And when you do that, you need to believe in the power of Tshuva. Because if you don't believe in the power of Tshuva, it's like to pray without an intention. If you don't believe in the Bible, Let's say a secular person, a person that doesn't have no understanding, he doesn't care, he couldn't care less about the Bible, and he reads that book as stories, 
It, it doesn't count for him like he read the Bible and like he put his heart like a person that loves the Torah, that appreciates the Torah, that cares about the Torah. It's not the same thing. They read the same chapter, they read the same, the same part of the Torah, but it, it's not the same mitzvah. For him it was a nice story or maybe that doesn't, didn't really like it. And for the other one, it was the, 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 the potion of his life, was the reason for life. You cannot reward both of them the same. Why? Because of his intention, because of his love. Now, when you want to go and do tshuva, if you don't believe that really tshuva will atone, if you don't understand how great and merciful the Creator is, so your tshuva doesn't count so much. But if you put your mind into the tshuva, and you will understand that the tshuva is the way that the Creator chose to reveal His endless love to all of His creations. And that's His will. And that's His final answer to all of your lackings. That you will come back to Him. Come back to me, Hashem is saying. In which way? Just simple conversation. But now you need to believe that after having that simple conversation, you're back in the game. You're back with Hashem. And Hashem will never going to leave you. So just you don't leave Hashem. In your mind, in your thoughts, don't be negative. When you're negative, when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're angry, when you're upset, when you're afraid, when you're stressed, that moment you're showing to the world, to yourself, to Hashem, that you don't have faith in the greatness of the Creator. But if you would just understand that all of the promises of the Creator are really standing and waiting for us. We're going to think, oh, you know, Hashem, yeah, He promised to that prophet and to that prophet, to Ishaya, to Yirmiyahu, to Yechezkel Navi, to all of the prophets. He promised them to our ancestors. Yeah, He promised. When you think that it's all going to happen? Ayomim bekolot ishmau. Today, if you're going to listen to his voice, okay, which voice? There are no prophecies today. Which voice? There is no prophet. We're not allowed to, to, to hear to everyone, someone that will claim that he's a prophet. We're not allowed to listen to him until Eliyahu and Avi will come and going to blow the shofar and he's going to declare that's Mashiach. From that moment and on, we're allowed to hear to the voice of Mashiach, to the voice of a prophet. Great, but until then, no Mashiach, no prophets. So where is the voice of Hashem? We are still commanded to listen to the voice of Hashem. Which voice? The voice of your soul. Because from the moment that we built the temple, it's written, I live inside of you. I'm inside of your hearts. Inside of your bodies. That's where Hashem is. Hashem doesn't need a house. Hashem doesn't need a huge building. Hashem needs your heart. The preparation of your heart is enough for the spirit of the Creator, the endless spirit of the Creator, the Almighty, the one of beyond, the, the, the eternity itself, the light of all lights. Infinity can live inside of you if you will just prepare a place inside of your own heart. You cannot measure the size of the heart of kings. Who are the kings? Our nations. Our nation. Those are the kings. The people that are coming down to this world from the kingship. From the kingship of heaven. Those messengers that are coming down to this world to reveal the light of the Creator. Man Malke Rabbanan. Who are the kings? Those teachers, those people that are going and spreading the light. The light of heaven. No, to spread the light of heaven, you need to be aware to the, the nature of that light of heaven, to the character, to, 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 to what it does in the world. It's light of mercy. Mercy, it's to reveal kindness to a person that is not worthy. Now, when you look at yourself and you see how much mercy there is in your life, how many good things you have. Oh, I can breathe. Oh, I can eat and I can digest. I can hear. I can taste. I can smell. I can see. I can feel. I can hold. I can stand. I can walk. I can sit. I have a place to sit. So many things that you cannot count. 
and you look at yourself and you check yourself and you realize very fast every person that looking at, observing at himself a little bit very fast he will understand that he's not worthy but you see that Hashem Bach gives you so much so much so you realize by that that Hashem Bach already reveals his mercy on you even though that you're not worthy so chasing yourself 24-7, blaming yourself on not being worthy, and also finding in that the reason why your prayers still haven't been answered, and money didn't came yet, and you didn't got that house, and you're not married yet, and you don't have children yet. All of those things are false blaming on yourself with no connection to the fact that the Creator reveals His kindness, His endless kindness, on you, even if you're not worthy. Hashem doesn't need you to be worthy that He will show His love on you. He just loves you. Because He cares about you. Because He made you. He is the Creator, and He created creations, and His mercy is on all of His creations, and that's where the story finished. That's it. Now, you just need to come with vessels. What are the vessels? The faith and trust in Him. But when King David is going to Hashem and begging and he is receiving his answers, he is receiving the bounty, he is being answered, you see Hashem is protecting him and he's praising him on that. Thank you Hashem for helping me here, for helping me there, for saving me here, for saving me there. Great, King David was answered. Amazing. But he's not holding himself as righteous, as worthy. He's holding himself as a dead dog. He's holding himself as nothing. He's so humble that he cannot even understand why Hashem Barach is having such mercy on him, except of understanding that the Creator is so kind. Also Moshe Rabbeinu. And the rest of the righteous ones, they don't see in their success an evident for their power, an evident for how righteous they are. They just see in their success an evident for the mercy of the Creator. Oh, how kind you are that you woke me up this morning to pray Shachrit. They both woke up. One woke up and felt so arrogant. One woke up and felt so humble. One realized that you received the Torah Mimidbar Matana from the desert as a free gift. When you feel yourself as the desert, so dry, that no flower, no grass can grow, nothing, no one can live in the desert. And you receive the Torah as a free gift, then... You can grow. You receive the Torah Midbar only when you're humble like the desert. But everyone are walking inside on you, on top of you. No one cares about you. Everyone just wants to walk away from you. It's so dry and hot and, and, and hard to stay. And still, that's the place to receive the Torah. Only when you hold yourself as nothing that you realize, who am I to contain the light of the Torah? Only if Hashem reveals His light on me, then I'll have something. But I'm not a vessel. Only if Hashem will give me the vessels. To receive that gift, to have that simple understanding of the truth, for that you must have that simple day, every day, every simple time, every day in your life, that you will spend that time with the Creator in a regular conversation that you will just talk to him like you talk to your best friend. And that's how you're also going to receive such amazing wisdom from heaven. You will reveal the hidden messages of the Creator. He will reveal the secrets of the Torah to you. And I'll tell you how. It's written, Nekevat Esovev Gavr, that the female is surrounding the man, like in the day of the chuppah, when the husband and wife are getting into the, under the chuppah. About to get married, so then the wife, the bride, she's surrounding, circling the husband and creating that protection. She becomes to be the wall that protects her husband and their house for good, forever. As long as he will be honest and will keep his word, what it's written in the Ketubah. That he will be humble, that he will respect her, that he's going to love her, cherish her, support her, going to care about her, going to do whatever it takes to cover her, to support her, to, to make her happy. She brings the, the light to surround him, to protect him, to cover him, to, to build him. Great. Now, the power of the female is to protect the husband, 
but only as long as he is making her happy, satisfying her, backing her up, telling her compliments, smiling to her, respecting her, and on. So now, when is the protection coming? When is the light surrounding the husband? When he is doing something good, when he provides satisfaction and joy and honor and respect and pleasure to his wife. Now, when you do that, to no matter who, if you're satisfying someone, so he becomes to be in that aspect of a female to you, and you become to be in the aspect of a male to her. Now, it can be also a woman. When Esther Malka saved all of Am Israel, so Am Israel became to be the aspect of a female surrounding Esther Malka, that she was in the aspect of a male compared to the husband that was the circle that was surrounding her. So also a female can be in the aspect of a male, and also a male can be in the aspect of a female if he receives that pleasure. Now, what is our way to pleasure Hashem, to satisfy Hashem? There is one way. While praying to Him. When we're keeping mitzvot, when we're keeping God's will, and we're praying to Him, in that moment on that it's written, Nekevate Sovev Gaver, that the female is surrounding the male, means that you become to be the inner side of the Creator, and He's receiving pleasure from you. You're satisfying Him. You're making the Creator happy. Now, think about the Creator Himself. You became now the inside of the Creator. On that it's written, Retzon Yere'av Yaseh. He's going to fulfill your will. You become to be the will of the Creator. What that you want is His will. You nullified yourself so much to Him that your will become to be His divine will. He wants what that you want. When you nullified yourself to Him, He wants whatever you want. Now He is following you. Like that it's written, Tzadik Moshe Lirat Elohim, that a righteous man got the power to control the fear of heaven of heaven. The faith of the Creator. The Creator is following that righteous man and whatever that righteous man will declare will be done. A tzaddik goes there, the righteous man will make a decree, Baruch Hu Mekayem, and the Creator Himself will keep that righteous man's decree. He will follow His word. Why? Because that righteous man is satisfying the Creator. Now, you don't need to be righteous for that. You just need to be honest. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. There is only one thing you need to do, and it's to talk from your heart. Just to open your mouth and to talk to the Creator. Words of truth will bring Him closer to you. And now you're satisfying Him. And now, in that moment, if you will know, means if you're going to believe in the power of your own prayer, if you're going to believe in the power of your own tshuva, if you're going to believe in the power of keeping Torah and mitzvot, not going to act humble. Oh, it's not worthy. Oh, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm zero. No. The Creator commanded you. Now you kept His word. It's not precious. Isn't it important? It's not great. It is. So say, I'm great. I got something great from heaven. I'm so, so rich. I'm so wealthy. I'm important now. The king put the crown on my head. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that when a person puts tefillin, a man puts tefillin on his head, so he's putting the crown of the Creator. Not something that is like the crown of the Creator. That's the crown of the Creator. Kitra de Malka. The crown of heaven. The crown of the king. When you put your tefillin, but it's my tefillin, it's not Hashem's tefillin. No, 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 you don't see the whole picture. You don't realize what happens in the, the high world when you put your regular tefillin. Nothing is regular in that. When a woman covers her head, when a woman lights the candles on Shabbat, when a woman bakes the chalot, when a person is saying Tehillim, no matter who you are, you give charity. Charity will save from death. Now you gave a coin, 10 cents, that's your charity. It's charity? Yes, it's going to save from death. Oh, you don't believe in that. 
You don't realize that the verses are saying only and only the truth. Now it's written, charity will save from death. Now you gave 10 cents, charity, it's going to save from death. If you're going to believe in it, it's going to have wings also. And you never can tell where it's going to reach, who it's going to save. It can save a butterfly. It can save a small kitten. It can save a deer. It can save a person. It can save a holy righteous man. You don't know. What you do know, the charity will save from death. Great. That's where your calculations, your thoughts must end. Take out a coin, take out a bill, and put it, and just give it to someone, to charity. If the name charity is on it, the name, the verse, saving from death, is on it as well. Now whose job is to keep those verses? Hashem, the Creator. You don't need to worry. You gave charity? Relax. Lay back. Be happy. And now dance all day because you saved someone from sure death. Even if it will be a small butterfly that was about to drown in the swimming pool. Won't you be happy to take him out? I would be so happy. I would be so glad. It's not a human being. It's not a holy old Jewish person that learned Torah all of his life. We're talking about a small yellow bright blue butterfly from the neighbor's swimming pool. I'll be happy to save him. I for sure will walk from my house to that house if I think that I can save a butterfly. I'm going to make that walk. I care. So now, if I gave 10 cents, for sure I saved the butterfly, for sure I did something good. I saved life. Charity will save someone from sure death. So now after you gave that charity, you need to believe in the importance of that mitzvah of charity. And to dance all day with that. To understand the importance of doing something with a connection to the Creator. Now you thought about Hashem. Do you know what it means? You pray to Hashem. You just said one word to Hashem. You said Hashem and that's it. You can't say anything else. You're called Hashem. You know what you've done? The Gemara in Masechet Barchot is saying that there is one thing that is in the peak of the world, in the top of the world, and people disrespect that thing. And Rashi is saying, Kegon Tfila, it's prayer. That it's above nature. And people cannot understand it. It's the highest thing in the world. You just said, Hashem, I'm down. Hashem, I don't know what to do. Hashem, I'm so lost. I'm so confused. I don't know what to do with myself. If you just open your mouth like that, you pray to Hashem. You did the highest thing in the world. At least that's Rashi HaKadosh's opinion. That's what Rashi thinks. That's what the Torah is saying to us. Rashi is explaining to us what it's written in Gemara Masechet Brachot. What the Torah is telling us in the verse, Kerum Zulut Libna Adam. That the highest thing of them all is prayer. And how you pray? Open the Rambam. Rambam I'm going to explain to you. Rambam is saying, you just need to talk to heaven. You just need to say to the Creator, your heart. Just be honest about it. Tell him I'm broken. I'm so sad. I'm so depressed. I don't know what to do. I can't focus in my learning. I'm not able to go to shul. I don't know what to do. I'm broke. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to pay my rent. I need to, I must fix my car. Hashem, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to make my wife happy. Hashem, I'm trying to put my kids to learn. I, I, talk! It's mitzvah. It's so high. It's so great. There is nothing that is higher than that. But you need to believe in that. You need to understand the power that God gave you, gave it to you in your hands. That you can choose, that you can decide. That you should choose to connect yourself to the Creator from no matter where you are. From that place, if you're just going to call the Creator, you're going to bring down the light of heaven to that darkness, to that low place that you're at. And then, you illuminate the darkness. You! With all of your weaknesses, with all of your doubts, you can never know the effect of the good actions, the good deeds that you do in your life. You can never imagine. You don't know for which great things Hashem is using you. If you're now calling Hashem and you're crying to Hashem and you tell Hashem, I'm afraid, I'm so scared, I'm terrified. I cannot go out of bed. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to Walmart. I'm scared. I can't do shopping. I don't know. I can't function Hashem. 
I don't want to go, I don't want to drive, I don't want to, I don't want to meet no one, Hashem, I'm terrified. In that moment, you're bringing down to the world light of courage to make other people brave, to strengthen weak people, to bring light to the darkness, to the depths. When you're being honest, all of our souls are connected. All of the coincidences that we have are not coincidence. It's a spiritual tree of souls that are wired one to each other, glued and bonded one to each other. And when you move a little bit to the right direction, you pull all of those branches that are connected to you, with you, like the tree. Like you see one tiny branch that moves with the wind and all of the rest of the tree is moving with him. You should know and believe in that, that when you move, even just a tiny, tiny, tiny measure, like a breath of a hair, you just tried, you just wanted. The will counts so much. Your will, your will met, met, means so much in the eyes of heaven. If you see that your child, he wants to do something in, in Kedusha, he wants to be holier. He wants to do something good. But you look at him, you see he's not able. But you see in his eyes, in his actions, in his words, that he wants to. You really look at him and you see, oh, he wants it. How precious it is for you. Just to see his will, his awakeness. It's amazing. From the other side, you're going to see someone that is... Uh, a fake from birth, running every morning, is keeping to all mitzvot, running, waking up early, doesn't have no problems, running, all of his family is supporting him, and everything is going so smooth and easy. But his heart is not over there. Just, he's used to that. He's used to, he's got a light, a very light, easy body. He wakes up early, he doesn't care at all about it. He's got money, family supporting him, rabbi supporting him, honorable f family amazing, amazing people are, are so generous and supporting him, but his heart is not there. So how much is going to count if he's just doing things without really wanting it to be? Once in Yom Kippur, I had to stay home. I told that story many times already. I had to stay home and not to go and pray Neila in, in Shul, in, in Bet Knesset. And after, after Yom Kippur finished, I spoke to one of my friends that went to Shul, and, and I told him, you know, he, he called me, he said, oh, we missed you, why you didn't come? So I told him, I, I had to stay with my family, with my wife, home, I couldn't come. So he said, he felt in my voice that I was, that I was down, that I was not happy to miss that important prayer in Minyan. So he told me, do you know what's the difference between a person that was home and wanted to pray in shul to a person that was in shul and wanted to be home? So you were home, but your heart was in shul. And another person that was in shul, his heart was home. He wasn't happy to be over there. So Hashem look at you and sees you in shul and you don't want to be there. So he's asking, Who asked you to come and, and, and to ruin my, my, my place, to destroy my place? That's not the right thing. That's not the right intention. It's better to do a little bit less with the right intention than to do so much with the wrong intention. It's written in the Gemara in Masechet Betza, Gdola Avera Lishma Amar Av Yitzchak. Gdola Amar Av Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Gdola Avera Lishma Mi Mitzvah Shelo Lishma. It's greater to sin for Hashem than to keep mitzvah for another reason. You hear that? It's a Gemara. Amar Av Nachman Ben Yitzchak. Everyone that wants to argue, go argue with the Gemara, not with me. I'm just quoting. Quoting Gemara. Amar Av Nachman Ben Yitzchak. Gdola Avera Lishma Mi Mitzvah Shelo Lishma. When your heart is aimed to heaven and you want to do good and in the end you're sinning, it's greater than if you're keeping a mitzvah but because you want to be honored you want to be respected. You have another intention in mind, except of doing it only for Hashem. I once heard two guys arguing if shrimps is kosher or not, fighting. You can never imagine that crazy argument, debate between those two guys. 
Shrimp is kosher. No, it's not kosher. Yes, it's kosher. It's a kosher fish. And they're arguing. Two bale tshuva. Two people that don't know, that can't that find the difference between right to left. Arguing, fighting. No, it's kosher. No, it's not. It's not, by the way. <laughs> but losing their minds, arguing and fighting. And now that person that finds himself arguing that he thinks that shrimp is kosher. What's his intention? To fail his friend? No. He really comes from such a crazy, dark background that for him shrimp is clearly kosher. He doesn't know. He ate shrimp so many times in his life and all of his family, they thought that it's kosher. And that it's kosher. For him, it's kosher. Argue with him. I saw that argument. You don't want to get involved in that fight. You don't want that. But he was fighting for the truth and he was wrong. But it means so much for Hashem. For sure it's wrong. But Hashem saw his heart in that day. Hashem saw that he wanted to say the truth, that he wanted to know the truth. He was wrong, but he was aiming to the truth. His heart was aiming to the truth. He wanted the truth. So you can never be judgmental on a person like that. So also on yourself when you're making mistakes, when you're aiming to the wrong directions, when your answers are wrong, when you misinterpret the right guidings, when you're all wrong, when you made a mistake, if your heart is honest and pure, and you really wish to do the right thing, and you're ready even to admit on that, it means so much to heaven. I read in one of the, one of the volumes of Likutei Halachot, one of the holy books that had been written by Rabbi Natan of Breslev, and he said that even a person that is idolizing a false Mashiach, that he is helping a false Mashiach for years of his life. He imagined to himself that Mashiach is life and exist. And he's going and helping that person, thinking that that person is Mashiach. And now for years he's serving that person and supporting him and protecting him and fighting for that false Mashiach. We're talking about a liar. We're talking about a, 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 a horrible person that pretends to be Mashiach and knows that he is a false Mashiach or such a crazy person that really thinks that he is Mashiach and he is for sure not Mashiach. Now, that person that was his helper, that was supporting him for years of his life, if now, after those years, he, when he will wake up and realize that he was wrong, that that person was not Mashiach, if he will admit that he was wrong and will stop supporting that false Mashiach, it will count for him in heaven like he was the main helper of the real Mashiach, even though that he never saw Mashiach in his life. Why? Because of his point of truth, being able to admit I was wrong, and dropping that imagination, that false faith of him idolizing, idolizing that person, backing off from that, means doing tshuva on that, will give him, provide him the reward in the world to come, like he was the right hand of the real Mashiach. Even if Mashiach is not going to come at all in that generation. Even if he will never going to see the real face of Mashiach. Why? Because he revealed, by his act of tshuva, dropping those nonsense, admitting on his mistakes, and going in a humble way to do tshuva, dropped his false success of being so close to Mashiach, doing tshuva on that, admitting the truth, and following the truth from now and on, he revealed his real honest intention that he had all of those years to be a real helper of the real Mashiach. Because when he realized that it was not Mashiach, he said, okay, so I was wrong. He was humble enough to admit in that truth. That's why it's written that in a place that Baalet Shuva can stand, even complete righteous people cannot stand. You, as a person that sinned so many times, that messed up so many times, that did such horrible things in your life, if you're just going to drop those things and going to admit, going to say, I'm sorry, 
I'm apologizing, it was wrong, gonna regret, gonna express your regret, gonna share your sorrow with the Creator, gonna ask for forgiveness, gonna show that from now on you're gonna try to fix your ways, to be a better person, a nicer person, more kind, more generous, more, more sensitive, and on. By doing that you're gonna achieve a level that will be even higher than a level of a complete righteous man that never sinned in his life. Hard to believe in that. So go work on your faith because it's written. It's written in the Bible. It's written in the Prophets. It's written in Torah Shebaal Peh, in the Mishnayot, in the Gemara Kedoshah, in the Midrashim, in all books of the Righteous Ones. It's written. That Hashem is so mercy and so kind and so good that He reveals His loving kindness even on people that are not worthy. And the way to come back to Hashem like that it's written, En Israel nigalim ela al yedei tshuva. Am Israel cannot be redeemed with no other way, no other solution they have except of tshuva to come back to Hashem. And when they're doing tshuva, miyad and nigalim. And when they're doing tshuva, immediately they're being redeemed. Immediately. Just you need to believe in the power of tshuva. You need to believe that after that you confessed on your sins, they've been erased. They're not written above your head anymore. If you did tshuva, you're clean. Like a baby that just been born. I did tshuva started my tshuva only in my 20s. Only when I was a soldier in the army, that's where I start thinking thoughts of tshuva. Once I was in a house of the righteous man, his name is Rav Alter David Chaim Stern. He was a student of the Chazon Ish in Bnei Brak. Hashem will lengthen his days, his life for good. A healthy, strong person, a real righteous man, a known, very famous, humble righteous man. He looked at me, he praised me in many, many ways. One of the praises that he said on me was, He's got a face like a baby. Great! That's what he said on me. Now I know what I was doing until I was 20 years old. I wasn't a baby at all. <laughs> I made many, many mistakes in my life. And I asked, one of his children, one of his sons, Rav Aaron Yitzchak Stern, I asked him, what your father means, I didn't say, tell, told him that he said that thing on me, I asked him, what does your father intentions, when he's saying on a person that he's got the face of a baby, he said like a person that never sinned in his life, now, come on, it's simple, I know that I sin, I know that I sin many, many times in my life, how can it be that a holy man like that can say something like that on me? If you don't believe in the power of tshuva, you cannot believe that story. And if you find yourself that you cannot believe that story, so it's only because that you don't believe in the power of tshuva. Because that it's hard for you to believe that also on you some righteous man can say that you have a face of a baby, a person that completed his tshuva. Because that it's hard for you to believe in yourselves that you can be as holy. That's why it's hard for you to hear that thing about me or about another person. But if you're going to believe in the power of tshuva, not in the power of that person, in the power of tshuva, in the mercy of Hashem, in the kindness of the Creator, that He can erase your sins. And after He finished praising me, Rav Alter David Chaim Stern, He looked at His helper that was pale, couldn't believe how that Breslaver, crazy Baal Tshuva, received all of those compliments and all of those praises. He asked him, do you want to know how He achieved all of those amazing things that I just said about Him? He said, yes. He said, by having thousands of hours of Hidbodadut, thousands of hours of prayers. That's how he, he was talking about me, achieved those things. Now I know that thousands of hours of Hidbodadut, it's something that I have in my pocket. That I do know. So now I can assure that what that I felt, what that I heard from him was right. Because he was basing it on it. And I know that I was praying. 
So now there's only one thing that is stopping you from being so close to the Creator. The prayer. That's the only thing that is separating the person from the Creator. The mouth, the lips, the teeth. The fact that you're not able to talk. So talk. On what you're going to talk? On whatever you have in your mind, whatever bothers you. And if you don't have words in the Ibodadut, so talk about that. You can make an amazing, fantastic Ibodadut praying on the fact that you don't have words to talk. Please, Hashem, I don't know what to say. I'm all blank. I'm feeling so empty. I'm not inspired. I don't have words. What do you want me to talk about? Please, I heard that other people are having hours of prayers. Thousands of hours I just heard. What are we talking about? I can't even finish 10 minutes. Please, Hashem, give me words. Please, Hashem, let me talk. Please, Hashem, you know I have so many issues. I have so many problems. I didn't ask even one thing until now. I'm just sharing. I'm just saying, please, Hashem, let me talk to you. Let me feel close to you. Let me feel that you care about me. Where are you, Hashem? You know what? Where are you hiding? Please, Hashem, I want to see you. Please, Hashem, can you come closer to me that I'm going to recognize you? Where are you, Hashem? Are you really here? Can you really listen to my prayers? Are you really hearing all of my words? Really, Hashem, give me that faith. I don't believe in that. Really, is it reality? Or maybe I'm just thinking, I'm dreaming. Hashem, is it the truth? Please, what's so hard in that? And we haven't even started doing it, but the duyot. And look how deep you're already inside. So close to Hashem, talking to Him, like you're talking to your best friend, sharing and talking. And to the religious ones of us, it's a mitzvah midoraita. You're going to be rewarded on that. Open Rambam. Look, mitzvah tatfilah, the mitzvah of prayer midoraita. What that Hashem is commanding you in the Bible to pray. That's what you need to do to ask for your needs, your lack of faith. So ask for faith. Please, Hashem, let me believe in you. Please, Hashem, I want to believe in you. I want to feel that you're close to me. I want to trust in you. I want to feel your closeness. I want to feel your warmth. I want to feel your love. I want to feel that you care about me. Please, Hashem, is it good that I'm praying like that, Hashem? Please guide me in the path of truth. Teach me how to pray. I don't know how to pray. I feel so dumb. I feel so stupid, Hashem. I feel so embarrassed. I feel so low. Please, Hashem, give me words. Please, Hashem, awake my heart. Please, Hashem, let me feel. Please, Hashem, I want to cry. Hashem, I want to be happy. I want to be... Whatever you want, just say and it's a mitzvah midoraita, and you came so close to the Creator. There is no closeness that is higher than that, that is closer than that. Then just to be able to share the space with Hashem, to share your time with Hashem. That's how you live eternal life, when you spend your time with Hashem. How you do that? With simple words. Simple words. Simple commandments of the Creator will bring you to the answer. Just you need to do it with honesty. You just need really to do it. What's your intention when you're keeping Shabbat? What is your intention when you're eating kosher? What is your intention when you're putting tefillin? What is your intention when you're learning Torah? You need to want to spend time with Hashem, to know Hashem, to think about Hashem. To share the space and the time and the place with the Creator. Just to hang out with Him. That's the highest level of them all. The Zohar Kadosh is saying that the highest level of them all is begin the inlet, to be aware to Him. To know Him and to recognize Him in your life. To ask him, was it you, Hashem, that was knocking on my door? Was it you, Hashem, that, that blow the wind? Was it you, Hashem, that ringed my mobile? Was it you that offered me that suggestion? Was it you, Hashem? Is it you in my life? Are you inside my heart? Are you inside my house? Are you inside my, my town? Where are you, Hashem? When a person is going with that honest approach, honest attitude, he will spend all of his life with the Creator, and He will become to be one of the righteous ones. You don't need to be a genius to be close to Hashem. Hashem is already close to you. You just need to remove those curtains, your lack of faith, lack of trust, in the mercy of the Creator that He is, He is kind enough to reveal His love also on you, also on me.
that I started my tshuva after years of sinning, after eating all kinds of treif, after eating everything that moves, after violating all holidays and all Shabbatot, until I was 20, I didn't ever catch Shabbat in my life. I was driving in Yom Kippur, I was drinking scotch in Yom Kippur. I couldn't care less. And I'm also not embarrassed in that. That's the Shashem's win. What can I do? If you would tell me, come and serve Hashem, it would be hilarious. It would be the funniest joke you ever told a person in your life. I would just laugh. It was so funny. It was not an option for me. Keep Shabbat, holidays. Who cares? We were clubbing. We were doing drugs, drinking alcohol, biking, whatever. Going to the beach, smoking marijuana. No, no one cared about anything. Tell me to go with you to Amsterdam. I would come. Amazing. Fantastic. 19 days in Amsterdam. I was before the army. Nice. Dancing. Two days in a row. No, no, That was something that was speaking to me. And now ask me. Do something. You can't attempt it to do anything. I don't want I puked all over the place. I don't need it anymore. It doesn't satisfy me. Take me to the beach. Okay, nice. Thank you, Hashem. Take me to... I don't, it doesn't speak to me anymore. Why? Because I've been there. I've done that. I, I ate it. I smelled it. I, I drank it. I, I, I vomit already. It's, it's enough. Enough, it's enough. A full cup of it. Now you do tshuva and you see that Hashem is shining. You see that Hashem is inviting. Ask me if I ever saw that Hashem Ibrach was punishing me. Never, even once in my life, I never saw Hashem's judgments in the world. You say there are judgments? Yes, I see judgments. But to tell you it's punishment, I never saw the connection. I never saw the connection between a baby that died, between a person that lost her husband, the baby, between a family that torn to pieces. I, I, I never saw the connection between that to the sins of the parents or to the mistakes of the wife or, or the horrible sins of the widow. I never saw those connections. I can only say one thing. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I'm not going to make up connections and I'm not going to paint stories of, of, of imaginations on the connections of why Hashem is so upset and angry. I'm not going to make up theories to tell you that Hashem is angry. The Gemara is saying that Hashem is angry one moment in every 24 hours. That's what I saw that's written. And except of that, in my life, I saw only kindness. Not because that my life is so easy. Because I cannot see the things that came to me was punishments. The opposite is truth. I saw that from the difficulties I grew up, that they gave me the life experience and they helped me to be humble and to learn my life wisdom, life experience, taught me so much. For my experience, I, I, I earned so much. I learned that I have the power We'll finish with that amazing quote that I like to quote so many times. That Bob Marley said once, that you can never know how strong you are until that time that to be strong is your only, only, only option you have. So from the challenges of life, you realize how much power you have. So all the difficulties that are coming to us in our lives are not necessarily punishments at all. Those are the tools, those are the weapons that we're receiving from help heaven to learn how to grow and how to progress and how to come closer and closer to Hashem. So I bless you all, everyone, every single one of you, of us, to learn in every moment of our lives how to come closer to the Creator. And the main and the highest and the fastest way to come closer to Him is to talk to Him like you talk to your best friend, to believe in His presence to believe in His existence, in His mercy, in His kindness, that He will give you things even if you're not worthy. Only things you lack of is vessels, and the vessels are the prayers. The requests are bringing the bounty into your pockets, into your arms. That's why you lift your arms when you pray. Try that. Lift your arms when you pray. You'll enjoy it. Thank you very much. Chazak
This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.